Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, meaning available to all peoples, available to all people, the way of the cross, okay? Common, meaning that there is one way, Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And how do you go to the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, you boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way? No, you go the way of the cross, the way that he has called. We talked about that in the previous video. <clears throat> I'm reading from Jude, by the way, verses 3 and 4. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. The saints. You say, born again, converted, you're a saint. Guess what? Saints sin. Unless you're some perfect creature from the coasts of England or something like that, just an example, you know, who has no iniquity or hypocrisy. Verse 4, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, you know who you are, my dear brother. Will you please, if I, if I don't remember, will you please put in the um, comment section the meaning, the dictatorial definition of lasciviousness? Thank you. So, verse 4 here, For there were certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this commendation. Why? Because they're not of us. They're not of us. They're not saved. They're lost. While we're here, of course, 1 John chapter 2, <laughs> verses 18 and on to 20, little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Anti is to be against and to replace. Okay? That's what it means to be anti. To be against and to replace. Even now are there many <laughs> Antichrists. Oh yeah. Whereby we know it is, that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. They went out from us. Why were they trying to associate themselves to be of us? Why were they trying to be with us, the saints of the Church of the Living God, so that they could learn how to deceive, so they could see how the authentic, the true really are, and try to take that onto themselves to put onto the facade. The hypocrisy that they're actually saved when they are not. And that is, that is the ultimate in being a hypocrite or in hypocrisy. A false brother or sister. Let's continue. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Yes, the falling away are those who claim to be saints of the church of the living God and are not. That is the falling away. Okay, the falling away is not saved brethren getting messed up. That has been happening since the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, all right, that, that. Been happening, uh, saved brethren that get messed up. The falling away. All these people that you thought were saved, 
they're being made manifest as time progresses that they were never saved in the first place. Hence the falling away. I don't care what some nitwit from the northeast, southwest, from the northwest wants to have you believe to defend his own lies and evil himself. Okay? Just, just so you know. Let's continue. But ye have an unction from the Holy One. And ye know all things. And of course, that unction from the Holy One is the Lord himself, that seal until the day of redemption, which the, which Galatians chapter 2, Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. They come in to see how saints act, live, behave, speak, and they do try. But the father who is in, who is in them, uh, they are of their father, the devil, comes out. Okay? Because, it ne because they've never left their true, their first father. Their first father, of course, these lost people, their first father is the devil. Okay? Absolutely. 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 And 2 Corinthians 11 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. Verses 12 on to verse 15. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we, these lying, deceiving Christian Infiltrators. What a joke these people are. They really are. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Transforming themselves. Remember Shimon the sorcerer in Acts chapter 8. Okay? He believed and he was baptized, right? And then he followed along. I'm sure he picked up some notable things about how these people, how the brethren, the saints were behaving. Tried to put that onto themselves. But, of course, Shimon the sorcerer was never saved in the first place. And it is, and I am one that uh, also agrees with this. Many people like to point to Shimon the sorcerer guy from Acts chapter 8 as one of the biggest proponents for Gnosticism. Verse 14. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. <laughs> That's the closest you're going to get uh, as an acknowledgement. That's the closest. And let's, while well, we're in uh, 2 Corinthians 11, verses 23 on to verse 30. <laughs> these, these people, <laughs> these Christians, okay? Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Okay? All right? I am more, and labor is more abundant. In stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day have I been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters. And you read Revelation chapter 17 verse 15 about what it says about the waters were likened unto peoples, nations, and tongues and stuff like that. Okay? In perils of robbers. In perils by mine own countrymen. In perils by the heathen. In perils in the city. In perils in the wilderness. In perils in the sea. 
in perils among false brethren. Yeah. In weariness and painfulness and watchings often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness, nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which confirm, which concern mine infirmities. Because I don't glory in the flesh. This is not the strength of my life. The Lord that dwells within me. Any of us saints, that's the way it is. But see what happens sometimes. We will revert to that. Sometimes. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the same he is brought in bondage. The other, now, that was an opening to this video. The other day, I unfortunately spent more time than I probably ought to have looking at, I spoke about this in the previous video, observing this whole subcategory, if you will, of these Christians who are very, whose main premise is to point out hypocrisy in others. And these people, they have common traits, okay? If someone who is a saint, someone who is saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, uh, you know, walking according to the scriptures, the Lord is within them, okay? Guess what? Saints sin, okay? We make mistakes. Guess what? Okay, you'll never hear this from one of these devils. And when you do, they're glorifying in the fact that they are sinners sinning and they're okay with it. It's just horrific. But guess what? I have moments where I act hypocritically. I do. I do. I have moments where I behave as a hypocrite. I do. I do. I do. I have moments like that. I have moments like that. We're going to look at the Lord willing. Uh, if this has to be a two-parter, it's going to be a two-parter. Okay, because we got notes here. We're going to go through this. Okay, because this is something that I noticed that these people do. These people. These lost Christians. These lost Christians who are go around pointing their finger, saying this guy's a hypocrite, this guy's a hypocrite, but yet they themselves are the epitome of a hypocrite. What is a hypocrite? Basically, a hypocrite is someone being something that they are not. Okay? And we, saints of the Church of the Living God, there are times when we behave as a hypocrite. Because, see, we are saved, born again, converted. And, see, there are times when we will behave just like lost people. But, see, we are not lost. We are saved, born again, converted. Hence, hence, we have moments when we behave as hypocrites. Hey! Hey! Hello! There are times when I behave as a hypocrite. There are times when I am hypocritical. I dare you, tough guy, to have the stones to admit that publicly while you're out pointing your finger at everyone else and you yourself are lost. Which is the height of hypocrisy. 
Okay, this, Paul talked about this in Romans chapter 2. Okay, and Lord willing, this will be deeply addressed whenever the Lord will have uh, your servant to do an expository on Matthew 7, 1 through 5. Brethren, please pray for that. Okay, that's going to be, that's going to be quite a dissection. But, you know, in Romans chapter 2, verses 1 and on to verse 3, Therefore thou art an excusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. You know what the difference is here? Romans 1, 2, and 3, at least up to verse 18 in Romans 3, is describing, is there to inform you the lost of your condition. Okay? This Yes, this is written for saved people. Yes, it is. But see, Romans 1, 2, and 3. See, when you are presented, when the Lord is going to use you to present to someone the gospel of Jesus Christ, you don't go to John 3, 16. Okay? You go to the book of Romans. This is the Lord pleading with you, showing your, you your indictment. Okay? All right? So in Romans chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 3, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest, judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Now see, what's the difference? Okay? Lost people are in that fixed position because they are lost. Okay? Hence, Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. We haven't even gotten to the main meat of the video yet. Okay? That's why I haven't told you to follow me along word for word yet. Okay? Because this is an opening. Okay? Proverbs 24, verses 16. Verses 16, just verse 16, excuse me, okay? For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked fall into mischief. See, saved people fall. Lost fall away because they're, they're not saved, okay? And, and Isaiah 30, Isaiah 30, verses 12 on to verse 13, okay? Okay? Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, where swelling out in the high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly and at an instant. Look at verse 12. Because he despised this word, the authorized version of the scripture, for our instruction in righteousness, and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. Oppression. Oppression. Wanting to keep people down where all you are about is pointing out this, that, that, this, this, guy's a hypocrite, this, 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 this. Pointing out everything else and everybody else. All the while you yourself are lost. That's what Paul's talking about, that kind of judgment, okay, in Romans chapter 2, okay? Even the guy from New York will at least, uh, at least, I'm not defending that wicked Jesuit inquisitor. I'm not defending that devil. But at least he makes an attempt to teach from Scripture. He's, he's a lost devil there. Those of you, you know who I'm re referring to, but, you know, at least he does that for the facade, for the uh, suspension of disbelief. There are others out there that don't even attempt that will have others do the speaking for them. Like Shimon the sorcerer, you pray for me. <laughs> Instead, none of these things will come upon me. You pray for me. They have others do the reading the scripture for them. Well, they themselves won't touch it with their hands. What a joke. What a joke. Okay? But see, stay there on. Stay there on. I liken hypocrisy in saints 
as to dung. Yes. What happens, you'll be walking and you'll step into dung and then it sticks to your foot and then you got to get a hose and hose it off, right? Yes, yes, yes. And with that cleansing there, okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 9 on to 11. If you're there already, start reading. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 and 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate men who act like women, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, sodomites, nor thieves who boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Spiritual. Okay? The spiritual kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord. And by the capital S spirit of our God. Which is the Lord himself. The Holy Ghost that seal until the day of redemption. Okay? Alright? And also 1 Peter... Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter, Brad, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 and verse 9. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. And true knowledge comes based off of wisdom. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord, okay? We'll, we'll address that here in a, a little later, okay? And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, uh, patience. I know, you're not a doctor. Neither am I. Ouch. And to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Hmm. That was an introduction. Today we're going to be talking about hypocrite and hypocrisy. Okay? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we will be looking at today. Be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Follow me along, make sure I'm telling you the truth, make sure I'm taking nothing out of context, okay? Okay? Follow me along, because sometimes my mouth will go quicker than my brain and I will skip a groove. Also, pay attention to the comment section, because of the brethren, um, the, the brethren who love me as their brother, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. To my uh, beloved brethren who keep me in check, okay? Check the uh, comment section because my brethren who love me and whom I love, well, if I make a, like a, uh, if I do, you know, skip a groove or get something a little off, the brethren will correct me, Okay? They will. So follow me along. All right? Lost people will throw out hypocrisy, hypocrite, hypocrite. Because similarly as they will say, well, God knows my heart. And these are the same people who will say, don't judge. 
And saved people will not resort to, don't judge me. And if they do, if they do, it's because they have made a stupid decision and the Lord is going to chastise them. But see, of a rule of thumb, lost people are the ones, well, God knows my heart. He sure does. Don't judge me. Okay. All right. <laughs> but see, hypocrisy. What does it mean to be a hypocrite? A hypocrite is basically someone being something that someone being something that they are not. Okay? And like I already alluded to, the ultimate in hypocrisy there, dear man, is someone who is lost pretending to be saved. That's the ultimate in hypocrisy. That's the ultimate hypocrite. And see, we saints who have moments where we behave just as the lost, but yet the difference is we are saved. And see, that's the thing that these lost people, you know, because they will, they will point out like you make a mistake, you make this, you do this. They'll point those things out while all the while they themselves are not saved. And yes, saved people make mistakes. Saved people sin. Yes, they do. But see, these people, these Christians, they live in it. And they, they're usually free gracers. You know, well, hey, yeah, you should try to abstain, but don't worry. Don't worry. And then when you got someone who wants to live their life according to the scriptures, and they make a mistake, they sin, and then these devils who live in sin, they're like, hey, 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 hey. So we're going to be looking up hypocrite, and we're also going to be touching on the word hypocrisy. Because hypocrite, um, the root of hypocrisy, okay? So this is, this is me, not milk. The first couple of minutes here in this, there's your milk. Go away and do your stupid little redundant things that you devils do. Job chapter 8. We are going to look at every appearance of the word hypocrite. Okay? Job chapter 8. This isn't milk. You devils, the most you can take is uh, 15 minutes. That's why a lot of these uh, uh, false infiltrating devils uh, only make videos about, you know, 15 minutes in length. Job chapter 8. And what's interesting, the first appearance, the first appearance, the first, first variation of any of the word hypocrite in any form appears in the book of Job. And that's significant. Why? Because you read Job 1 and 2, Satan was allowed to afflict Job. And Job went through horrific things. All, all he lost everything, virtually everything, in one fell swoop, swoop. One, two, three, four, and with all that losing, he shaved his head, fell down and worshipped, and said, uh, "Naked came I out of the womb; naked shall I return hither, uh, thither." The Lord gave; the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this, the Lord, uh, Job didn't sin. Okay, all right. But see, Job's three <laughs> friends, who at first were doing right came and just were there with him. The ministry of presence, as I've heard it put. And that's very good. I like that, even though ministry of presence is not in Scripture. But just being there for somebody, just being there physically in their presence, okay? And they didn't say a word to Job. Just being there with him. Sometimes there are times when you and I, as saints, we need to shut our mouth and just let the brother or the sister vent okay but see what happened is his three friends started opening their mouth and then they started accusing him of things okay Eliphaz um, Eliphaz uh, Bildad and there's another one that I right off the top of my head I can't remember but this is what okay this is where we begin Bildad the Shuhite, okay? Bildad must have been a short guy. How do you know? Oh, because he was only a Shuhite. Sorry. 
Job chapter 8. We're going to read this whole chapter for context's sake. Because this is the first appearance of the word hypocrite. And, and in any of its form. Okay? So. Then answered Bildad the Shuhite and said, How long wilt thou speak these things? Remember speaking. And how long shall the, the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? Doth God pervert judgment, or doth the Almighty pervert justice? If thy children have sinned against him, and he have cast them away for their transgression, if thou wouldest seek unto God betimes, and make thy supplication to the Almighty. Now stop right there. You read in the first chapters of Job, um, Satan was allowed to kill them, not necessarily without, uh, without anything warranting it, because Job would go and offer uh, uh, prayers and supplications and sacrifice for his uh, sons because, it's, he, because it says he might, they might have cursed him, okay? So Job was looking out for them, okay? All right? But also the accusation, verse 5, if thou wouldest seek... God be times and make thy supplication to the Almighty. Verse 6. If thou wert pure and upright, the accusation. And the, and the Lord, read Job 1 and 2 on your own time. Okay? The Lord himself of Job said that Job was one that feared God and eschewed evil and was upright. Okay? God allowed Satan to afflict Job without Job having anything, you know, without anything to warrant it. Okay? And here Bildad is accusing Job of sin. Okay? The accusation. Should have kept their mouth shut. But let's continue. Verse 7. Oh, let's read verse 6 again. If thou wert pure and upright, surely he would make surely he would await for thee. And make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. So verses 4 on the 6 is the accusation leveled against Job. Okay? Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. For, I, for inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. For we are but of yesterday, and know nothing. Because our days upon earth are as a shadow. See, and this he's speaking truth. He is. Okay? Shall not they teach thee and tell thee and utter words out of their heart? Can the rush grow up without mire? Can the flag grow up without water? Whilst it is yet in his greenness and not cut down, it withereth before any other herb. So are the paths of all that forget God. Here it is. And the hypocrites, hope, shall perish. So hypocrites. Okay. That's the first appearance of it. Okay. Right there. Okay. First of any form. And the hypocrites, hope, shall perish. So now hold up. Okay. Look at verse 2. How long wilt thou speak these things? Speaking. Okay. Okay. And the accusation, specifically in verse 6, if thou wert pure and upright. Hmm. So, Bildad, as with the rest of Job's three friends, were accusing Job of being something that he was not. Hence, a hypocrite. Okay? All right? Let's continue. Let's continue. Verse 14. Whose hope shall be cut off, and whose trust shall be as a spider's web. He shall lean upon his house, but it shall not stand. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. And I'm sure if you check the margin of your scriptures, the, you know, the uh, reference for the house built on a rock and the house built on the sand, okay? His, he is green before the sun, and his branch shooteth forth in his garden. His roots are wrapped about his he, the heap, and seeth the place of stones. If he destroy him from his place, then it shall deny him, saying, I have not seen thee. Behold, 
This is the joy of his way, and out of the earth shall others grow. Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man. And see, accusation again. Okay? Bildad was calling Job a hypocrite, uh, leveling at Job was like, hey, you're not who you claim to be. And that's exactly what all these fake, these, no, they're not fake Christians. These Christians, these guys who are always pointing out hypocrisy this, they're always pointing out wrong in other people and using other people to do their speaking because they're, they're not saved, they're lost and inept. <laughs> Fascinating stuff. Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evildoers, till he fill thy mouth with laughing and thy lips with rejoicing. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. So, Bildad was accusing Job of being something, basically, that he was not. He accused him of not being pure, of speaking foolish things. And verse, so where was that? Um, uh, uh, where was that? Uh, verse 20. God will not per, uh, cast away a perfect man, meaning perfect in heart. Okay? So we see the first appearance of hypocrisy, hypocrites, okay? With the apostrophe on there, okay? Very first appearance of any form. Okay? From that alone, we can pretty much get a good definition of what it is to be a hypocrite. Okay? And to be in a hypocrisy. But well, let's, let's continue in the book of Job. Job 13, 1 verse, verse 16. Okay? Job 13, verse 16. He also shall be my salvation, for an hypocrite shall not come before him. And you got to remember, this is long before, long before this current dispensation. And I believe also that this is before the flood. Okay, whatever, you know, the law itself is not specifically mentioned. Okay, all right, all right. The flood isn't even referenced. Okay, there's talk of Leviathan and Behemoth, you know, that kind of stuff. We're not going to get off on that. But nonetheless, okay, he also shall be my salvation for an hypocrite shall not come before him. See, save people will have moments where we are hypocrites and act hypocritically. But see, a just man falls seven times and rises up again. We can repent of that. The Lord can and will forgive us of that. And we go on and see the devil's one and keep you fixed right there. Don't, don't you? Don't you? You, you guys are so stupid. <laughs> but no, but see, they're brilliant. But yet they're stupid. They really are. They really are. Okay, let's continue. Job 17, 1 verse, verse 8. <clears throat> Upright men shall be astonished at this, and the innocent shall stir up himself against the hypocrite. And you got to remember, Paul said, what I hate, that I do. Paul wanted not to sin, but he sinned. Paul did not want to be a hypocrite. But there were times when Paul was a hypocrite. We'll look at that. We'll look at that. Everybody knows about Peter. Everybody. Even the devils know about Galatians 2, about Peter being a hypocrite. We're not even going to touch on that. We're going to look at some other examples, okay? Paul. He had moments when he was a hypocrite. David. David had moments when he was a hypocrite. I have moments when I'm a hypocrite. See, a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked fall into mischief. See, these wicked people who are constantly pointing out faults in others. See, see, you're, you're ingratiating yourself amongst those of like mind who are lost. All about flesh. So, of course, 
Of course people are going to go back and forth, back and forth with you and, and puff you up and give you a sense of meaning because it's the pot calling the kettle black. You're amongst your own. You're amongst lost people. <laughs> okay. Okay, now let's go to Job 20, verses 4 and verse 7. Zophar, that was the other man, okay? Bildad, Eliaf, Eliaphas, and Zophar, those are the three friends, okay? Knowest thou, knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? Wicked, hypocrite. Ah, yes. See, these hypocrites, true hypocrites, the epitome of a hypocrite is someone claiming to be something they're not. You're not saved. And you're claiming to be saved, pointing out hypocrisy in everybody else. <laughs> see, see, your joy is for but a moment because you get people upset. You're just a jerk in general. Okay? No wonder people don't love you or like you. <laughs> okay? All right? <laughs> even your own! Even devils! Okay? All right? But anyway, verse 6. Though his excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reacheth unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? Hmm. Very interesting. Job 27. Job 27. Verses 1 on to verse 12. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment, the Almighty who hath vexed it my soul, all the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. Note that lowercase s. Okay? And he breathed into his nostrils, and man became a living soul. Okay? Um, writing down um, for it in the description box. Beg your pardon. All the while, uh, let's read verse 3 again. All the while, my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you. And that's what you do when you answer a fool according to his folly. Yeah. Till I die, I will not remove mine integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast. I will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me as long as I live. Let mine enemy be as the wicked. And he that riseth up against me as the unrighteous. For what is the hope of the hypocrite? That at your deathbed you're going to be like Constantine and get into heaven? You are smarter than that. <laughs> okay? Though he hath gained, when God taketh away his soul, Will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? You lived all your life as a devil. You're not saved. Pointing out hypocrisy this, hypocrisy that, 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 that. These guys pointing it out, you know, hey, don't judge me. You're doing the same thing I do. Yeah, they're doing that in context as lost people calling out other lost people. Okay? All right? <laughs> Let's continue. Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? I doubt these people even have a life of prayer. I doubt it. Okay? I will teach you by the hand of God that which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? And in context with hypocrite, vain, wicked, vain, spirit, Speaking on pure, okay, okay. A hypocrite 
someone trying to be uh, someone being something that they're not. Okay. All right. I'm not a lost sinner. Okay. I'm not a lost sinner. But because my spirit and soul are housed within this sagging skin suit, which these devils love, I have moments when I am a hypocrite and act hypocritically. But see, the difference is we don't stay there on. We go to the Lord and he cleanses us and forgives us. These people. Look at, look at, don't, don't. Don't waste your time with these people. You know why? Because they're all about flesh. I watch, I spent way too much time looking at this whole subcategory, if you will, of these Christians pointing the finger, insulting each other. And it's like, I watched it and it went by a little too easy. Why? Because it was gratifying to the flesh because that's what they're about. That's what they're about. And when something is of the Lord from the scriptures... And like in Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 12, okay? Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Uh oh, wrong way, Brad. <laughs> okay? See, what these devils do with, you know, you know, attacking people, pointing out this, that, they're all hypocrites. This guy's a hypocrite. This guy's a hypocrite. This guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. And that's all they're about. And they themselves are inept, incapable of doing anything in Scripture. So they have other people do it for them because they themselves are inept. You're inept. You can't do it. You know why? You're lost. Okay? You're lost. You have to depend on what your mother, Roman Catholicism, gives you. Okay? But see, and these, these things that these Christians do, it's gratifying to the flesh. The, 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 one, the, the one dude I was watching, it's like, I noticed, it's like, I gave this guy over 45 minutes of my time. And it went by quick. Because all they were doing was knocking each other. Well, all the while saying that, I love Jesus. It's like, which one? Which Jesus? Which Jesus are you talking about? Not the one from the scriptures. Looking like that. <laughs> talking like that. <laughs> Give me a break, man. Okay? But... See, anything that comes from the Lord, scripturally, verse 12 in uh, Ecclesiastes 12, and further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh, and we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God, that we be workmen who meaneth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. A little bread eyes there, okay? Okay, and we are to study to be quiet, you know, how to live our lives in accordance with the scriptures. Not going about being a rabble rouser, but not being silent when it comes to issues of truth and godliness and doctrine, okay? All right? But now let's go back to Job chapter 27, okay? Oh, we, did we already finish? Well, let's read 11 and 12 again. I will teach you by the hand of God that which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain, worthless, empty, nothing, nothing, nothing? See, we saints of the church of the living God, okay, we sin, okay? I have moments when I behave and act like a hypocrite. I have moments where I act and behave hypocritically. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay? And I admit that. I also have quite a pride problem that, praise the Lord, I got a wife who loves me, I got brethren who love me, I got God who loves me, okay? Present tense, because he saved me. I'm of him, okay? His love is for me. And he kicks me in the stones daily. But see, that's not there in these people who are constantly pointing out See, okay, all right, that's not there in these people, that's not there in these people, okay, because think about this, if you make this far, um, all the while you're pointing out how bad everybody else is, you're putting off this thing that you are that perfect, that you are this perfect creature, <laughs> Okay. 
I would love to hear some of you people confess your faults. It's like, look, okay, I sin every day, okay? I, I, I have moments when I act like a hypocrite, okay? I have a problem with pride, yes. But no, they're too busy pointing it out in other people. And how many fingers are pointing back at them? And then they go, well, then don't judge. We'll talk more about that later, but see, we are called to judge. And we who are saints of the church and the living God, we are to first judge ourselves in Scripture, yes, but we are to judge others. Okay, More on that later. And besides, we've talked about judging uh, quite, quite a bit on this channel as well. Okay, but more on that in another video, Lord willing, okay? But now let's go to Job 34. Job 34. Job 34, verses 19 on to verse 30. I told you this was meat, not milk. Last scripture. And this is Eliu, the young whippersnapper, by the way. How much less to him that accepteth not the persons of princes, nor regardeth the rich more than the poor. Perfect, righteous judge. For they all are the work of his hands. In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity sh where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. For he will not lay upon man more than right that he should enter into judgment with God. He shall break in pieces mighty men without number and set others in their stead. Therefore he knoweth their works and he overturneth them in the night so that they are destroyed. He striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways so that they cause so that they cause the cry of the poor to come unto him and he heareth the cry of the afflicted when he giveth quietness who then can make trouble and that's what these devils do they want to make trouble for us and when he hideth his face who then can behold him whether it be done against a nation or against a man only, that the hypocrite reign not, lest the people be snared. And what do we have today? A hypocrite is someone trying to be some, trying to be or being something that they are not. More or less. And the falling away. They went out from us, but they were not of us. And they tried, they mingled themselves, tried to mingle themselves among us so that they could learn our behaviors, so they could put on the facade that they're of us. But then again, you know, you shall know a tree by its fruit. Okay? <laughs> All right? Okay? Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. Verse 9. Proverbs 11, verse 9. A hypocrite, now check this out. A hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Knowledge. And a hypocrite with his mouth, which we also saw in Job chapter 8, which uh, Bildad, the Shuhite, Mention, okay? Hmm. So there is hypocrisy in speaking, but there is also hypocrisy in action in being, okay? Yes, there is. And you know, you got to remember Paul. Romans chapter 7, okay? Romans 7, all right? But see, there again, all right? We have moments like that. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked fall into mischief. See, there is a difference. We have the Lord within us. You don't have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, living in you. Then your hypocrisy is always going to abound. Okay? 
All right? Okay? But an hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Knowledge comes from wisdom. Job 28, 28. And on demand he said, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. And with that, James 3, James 3, okay? This was a, quite, a, quite a thing here that the Lord uh, stirred. Uh, praise the Lord. Okay. James 3, verses 13 on verse 18. Who is a wise man endued with knowledge among you? Okay. Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom, fear of the Lord. Okay, but there is also, there are two wisdoms. Got to write these down or I'll forget. There are two wisdoms. What are these two wisdoms? But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, yeah, <laughs> glory not and lie not against the truth. Some of these Christians that are all about this and insult one another and just point out hypocrisy and everybody else while themselves are hypocrites, they're lost. Um, <laughs> well, they're SJWs, Society of Jesus Workers. Oh, no, no, actually what they like to say SJW is a social justice warrior. But the irony of SJW with social justice warrior, Society of Jesus worker. <laughs> Never mind, let's continue. All right. Verse 15. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, led by the senses, devilish. Which in these Christians that I spent way too much time looking at multiple videos and giving this like, wow, dude, how can I? the wisdom that they have is earthly, sensual, devilish, not a fear of the Lord, but the fear of man. They are of the father, the devil. For where envying and strife is. There is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle. Here's the wisdom that comes from God, the fear of the Lord. And easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Aha! And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And therein lies the rub. See, like it talks about in John chapter 4. Okay, God loves you, by the way. Okay, where we talk about John 4. Okay. In John chapter 4, talk, that's talking about the Lord that is within you. Oh, no, excuse me, John chapter 3. But where in 1 John, excuse me, where he talks about the indwelling of the Spirit who will not guide you into sin, okay? But we sin. Why? Because it's a battle of Spirit, the Lord in the saved believer, against the flesh. It's a constant daily struggle, okay? The wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is without hypocrisy. Okay, but see, we are fallible. Okay, we still sin. And you got these idiots constantly calling out other people. That's all they do. There, there's a time and a place to call out, to expose. Yes, there is. But that's all they're about. And they themselves can't even themselves teach or do anything in Scripture themselves. They have to have others do it for them. Okay? See, God within us will not guide us into sin. God within us, the saved, there is no hypocrisy in him. Absolutely not. But see, where does the hypocrisy lie? Here! 
in the flesh that these devils love so much. Okay? They love the flesh, uh, but hate Scripture. Okay? All right? They love the flesh, but they hate the Scriptures. Well, all the while saying that they don't have any problems with Scripture, yet they themselves don't read any or try to teach anybody out of their whatever. Okay? It's, it's nonsense. The epitome of hypocrisy. I have moments when I act as a hypocrite. I have moments when I act hypocritically. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But see, the difference is I'm saved. I'm saved. I go to the Lord for him to cleanse me and to forgive me and to press forward and not staying back here. Okay? You know, we have moments where we make mistakes. We do. But see, the devils want to keep you right there. Say, like, hey, ten years ago he said this. He was a hypocrite. Blah, blah, blah. You know, brethren, when you run into these types of these Christians and you see that all they're about is doing that, get away from them. I mean, if you want to be entertained, that's your problem. Okay? <laughs> all right? It's, it's, it's theater. These people are thespians. Actors. Okay? All right? And, you know, the wisdom that is from above, okay, is first pure. Psalm 19. I ought to get my wife in here read this because this is uh, uh, one of her favorite his psalms. Psalm 19, verses 7 on to verse 14. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Fear of the Lord, which is wisdom, is clean, enduring forever. Note the thing about purity. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Hmm. Acting as a hypocrite. Acting hypocritically. Having moments where we're in hypocrisy. Safe people have that, you know. Read Romans chapter 7. Okay? Read Romans chapter 7. Okay? Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And my redeemer. Yes. Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9, verses 13 on to verse 17. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth him, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. These people who are constantly pointing out this, that, and then the other thing, and all these people all the while, they are lost and they're not even seeking the Lord because they're serving the Vatican and going to hell. Right. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, brush, branch and rush, in one day. The ancient and honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. And they are led, and they that are led of them are destroyed, making them twofold more the child of hell than themselves. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men. Neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For every one is an hypocrite and an evildoer. You see the link with hypocrite and evildoer. Yes, hypocrisy is not good. It's bad. And you got to remember Romans chapter 7. Hold on. 
Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. Hypocrite! There again with the speaking. Okay? For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Verse 13. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. You read in Amos chapter 4. Well, let's go there. But before we go there, remember. Okay? Remember Paul in Romans chapter 7. Okay? Romans chapter 7, verse 15. For that which I do I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Sin. Paul had moments when he was a hypocrite. Acted as a hypocrite. Okay? Funny. Some of these people who are always pointing out, how come they don't bring that up about Paul? Paul was a, had moments when he was a hypocrite. Well, look at that. Okay? And, you know, right here, um, verse 19, For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Unless you're one of these perfect creatures, you know. One of these Society of Jesus warriors. Uh, excuse me. Social, social justice warriors out there pointing out the wrong in everybody else. And are scripturally inept themselves. Yeah. 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 Uh, go to Amos chapter 6. Uh, excuse me. Amos chapter 4. Go to Amos chapter 4. Okay. Daniel. Hosea. Joel. Amos. Amos 4, 6. On to 12. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and want of bread in all your places, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. And I also have withholden the rain from you, when there were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained not withered. So two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, said the Lord. I have smitten you with blasting and mildew, when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased, the palmer worm devoured them, yet have ye not returned unto me, said the Lord. I have sent among you the pestilence, after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword, and have taken away your horses, and have made the stink of your camps to come up unto your nostrils. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have overthrown some of you, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, quickly. And ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. And like we talked about in the other, the vid previous video, your belief on this is irrelevant. You are going to stand at, before the Lord Jesus Christ and kneel before him. You are going to bow your knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your belief on that is irrelevant. Whether you're going to do it at the judgment seat of Christ or at the great white throne, you are going to bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. The previous video, check that out in the, in the description box, okay? Now, of course, let's go to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to read verses 1 on to verse 5. Uh, we are. This is not the video where we're going to uh, go in deep depth um, expository on this. Lord willing, that will come soon, okay? Lord willing, that's going to take a lot of work because we are going to just... Brethren, please pray for that. But we're going to read this. And this is where they like to go to, okay? And the thing about this particularly, it's talking about hypocritical judgment. It is. For example, okay? I'm saved, born again, converted. 
a saint of the church of the living God. I still sin. I sin daily. I have moments where I behave as a hypocrite. I have moments when I am hypocritical, yet I am saved, born again, converted. Okay? The Lord has brought me out of many things. I can talk to you, sodomites, about it because I was once one. Okay? Hence, I am not a hypocrite telling you that that's sin. God hates it. Okay? I can say that to you. There are those who used to be drunkards. Okay? They can talk to you. Formerly being drunkards. Save brethren who used to be drunkards. They can, it's like, you know, you shouldn't drink. It's like, you drank before. How dare you speak to me? But see, the Lord drove, delivered me out of it. Okay? All right? See, there's a difference there. But see, just like the lost people who say, well, God knows my heart. That, that, save people. That's, that's not the statement of save man or woman. Don't judge me. When they, I mean, and then, hey, clean up your own backyard before you talk to me first. The pot calling the kettle black. But Matthew 7, verses 1 and verse 5. Judge not that ye be not judged. For what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Cross reference this with Romans chapter 2. What is it? Verses 14 on to verse 24, I believe it is. Okay. Talking about hypocritical judgment. We are to judge. Okay. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. And see, for us today, when the Lord saves us, we have the Lord dwelling within us, okay? We have moments when we sin, but see, we're saved, okay? We're saved. We're going to heaven. Sealed. Once saved, always saved. In that respect, the mote has been cast out. Think about that. Think about that, okay? We saved saints of the church of the living God. We are sealed until the day of redemption. We are sealed with the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. Jesus Christ, who is God our Father, dwells within us. In Him, in Jesus Christ, there is no sin nor hypocrisy. And God, who dwells within us, will not guide us into sin or in hypocrisy. Not at all. So... The Lord within us, having the Lord in us, that moat is cast out, even though, even though we save saints still sin. Okay? See how that works? But also, you dear people, you have to remember something. Now, instruction in righteousness. Absolutely! And Paul echoes it in Romans chapter 2. Okay, about you, you know, uh, do you... Uh, if, Let's, let's go there. Let's go there. Instead of, you know, butchering it or bradizing it. Okay, let's go there. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Come on. Where was it? Um, I, it was verse 17. Uh, on to verse 24. Yes. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God. This is after the death, burial, and resurrection. And knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge, and of the truth of the law. The form of knowledge. Having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof from such turn away? Uh-huh. See, within us the saved, God dwells within us, who in God there is no sin nor hypocrisy. And God will not guide his saints into sin or into hypocrisy. But see, we got to make the right choices. It's not a gunpoint. Okay? You understand? So, 
when a saved brother or sister who is taken from the depths, from the dung of one thing, and saying to you, hey, okay, you see how this works? Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Hmm? And these guys, they have no self-examination. They don't. But they're defensive. They use Matthew 7 as a defense. Okay? Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal. Dost thou steal? Thief and a robber, boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way? Yeah. Okay? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? What is the idol? An idol is, could be a statue, yes, but also an idol is something that takes the place of God, and usually the idol nowadays is the one that they look at in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, <laughs> through breaking the law dishonorest thou God, for the name of God is blasphemed among the gentles through Gentiles through you as it is written. Okay? Hypocritical judgment. And see, while we have moments where we are hypocritical and act as hypocrites, but see, the Lord within us is not a hypocrite. Okay? All right? Big difference between those who aren't pointing the finger than those of us who are and have moments where we make stupid decisions. But see, Matthew chapter 7, dear friends, is also written for a time where it's only works. See, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, dear friends, is for the kingdom of heaven. The thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? It's for the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is all works. Isn't it? Yeah. So, well, well yes. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Paul echoes the same thing, virtually the same thing in Romans 2, yes. But see, you, 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 you people who go to this to defend yourself and to point out others, um, you know what? You want to you wanna put on the facade a little bit better, you idiot? Why not at least try to do it from Romans 2? Okay? All right? That's more applicable for us doctrinally today. Well, this holds instruction in righteousness, yes, but you got to remember, this is the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven, specifically. Instruction in righteousness, absolutely. Yes. you got to remember that, people. Uh, Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, Verses 39 on to verse 45, Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, verse 39 on to verse 45. And he spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? The, the, the pot calling the kettle black. Lost people who think they are of us and never were of us. Okay, because they just believe or whatever. They're not of us. They're putting on the facade, deceiving, uh, deceiving and being deceived, whatever. Okay, they're blind leading the blind. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Hey, you, you know, all the while while you're pointing out how imperfect everyone else is and how everyone else is a hypocrite, yet you're putting off this aura that you are this sinlessly perfect. You're a little Christ, huh? Huh? You old perfect social justice warrior. Oh, excuse me, society of Jesus worker. Huh? Come on, guys. 
Come on. Come on. I think you need to change your act up at least. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceivest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou say to thy brother, brother, and who is my brother? Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself hold, beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye. The hypocrite. Cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to be to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. For a good tree bringeth forth not corrupt fruit, which these devils do. Their fruit is corrupt. Absolutely. Neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his fruit, by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure uh, of his heart, and you trust in your own heart, you're a fool, and a fool says in his heart there is no God, so you are of your father of the devil who in his heart wanted to be like God, like the Most High. Brilliant, yeah. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Oh, so, you, so you're a perfect creature, huh? Yeah. Nonsense. Nonsense. Luke 13. Luke 13. Luke 13. Verses 11 on to verse 17. <laughs> and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in when men ought to work, and then therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loosed? from this bond on the Sabbath day. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed. And all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. And here we're touching in the nitty gritty of it. These people who put on the facade, the shoe, that they're Christians. And they are! And there's a difference between a Christian and a saint. Of the church of God. There, there's a big difference. Okay? There's a big difference. But Isaiah chapter 32. Isaiah chapter 32. Okay? Isaiah chapter 32. Isaiah chapter 32, verses 1 on to verse 8. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as an hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim, 
and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. Stammerers, uh, you know, people who trip over their own tongue, basically. The vile person shall be no more called liberal, nor the churl said to be bountiful. For the vile person will speak villainy. Check this out. And his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy. A lost, infiltrating devil working for the Jesuit order, a servant of the Vatican and Satan, going around calling everybody a hypocrite. And that's all they do. Inept of anything in scripture themselves. It's not that they, they, are, they don't want to or just don't have time. They can't. They have other people step in and to do it for them. Hmm. And to utter error against the Lord. To make empty the soul of the hungry. And he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. Cause those who may be entering in not to go because of them. More on that in a little bit. The instruments also of the churl are evil. The instruments of a foolish shepherd. Yeah. His device, he deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words. Even when he need, even when the needy speaketh right. Let that one roll around in your head a little bit. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He dis deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. Put in your head Job. His three friends were falsely accusing him of being a hypocrite, being something that he wasn't. Right? But the liberal deviseth liberal things, and by liberal things shall he stand. And how do we stand today? In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, God, who is our Father. Okay? And 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. This is actually going a little quicker than I thought it would. Praise the Lord. Got another video to do today, too. 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself, speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Pot calling the kettle black. Yeah. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. We can't get away from this topic, this subject, without going to Matthew chapter 23. There ain't no way. There ain't no way. Matthew chapter 23. Uh, 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 one, one moment. One moment. All right. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 12. Now, Matthew chapter 23 is describing the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Because unlike some of these people, these Christians, you know, want to tell you that they're going to be going through the Great Tribulation. Well, they are. But the saints, the body of Christ, the church of the living God are going to be caught up, redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? There's a big difference. 
okay? But Matthew chapter 24 is all about the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Matthew chapter 23 is significant because it is describing the spiritual climate before, okay? A lot of instruction in righteousness here. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes, the ones who write, and the Pharisees, Catholics, sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say, I do not. See, and the scribes, the Pharisees, they had the Torah. They had the writings. They had the Psalms. Okay? The word of the Lord is pure. We already read Psalm 19. Okay? And if you want, read Psalm 119. Okay? All right? So the word of God is pure, enlightening the eyes. But see... Even though they had the true word, they weren't living up to it. Okay? Why? Let's continue. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. They won't do any of it. And the desire to do that is not even there. Prove it to you. Okay. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. And that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Ye are they that justify yourselves before men. See, the Pharisees at this time, they were more concerned about their career, about their social standing, than the actual Lord himself, because he was right there. Their Mashiach was right there. But they were more about their prominence, about putting on that facade that they were something. Hence, the desire to seek God wasn't even in them in the first place. Hypocrite! God isn't even in most of these people to begin with, and they're pointing the finger at everybody else. Hypocrite! And while we, saints of the Church of the Living God, we have moments when we're hypocrites. We have moments where we are in hypocrisy. Yes. But if just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked falleth into mischief. You see? But all their works they do for to be seen of men, they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. It's a shoe. It's theater. It's a performance. Those that that time that I cannot get back, you 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 owe me at least over two hours of time. <laughs> okay, you do, you filthy devils. But <laughs> you know that's the thing. It was entertainment. It was all fleshly, and the flesh was drawn into it. Why? Because it wasn't spirit. But it was flesh. And loved the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man, man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. And that's talking about a title like the Catholic Jesuit priests. Okay, father, so and so, okay. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. And think about that. These SJW people, 
who are thinking, you know, putting on this facade that they're so high and mighty and sinless and perfect creatures, pointing out in everybody, there's a time and a place for everything, yes, okay, not denying that, but when that's all these people are, that's all these people are about, pathetic. But see, now let's, let's shift a little. Let's look at some examples in Scripture of those who actually had moments where they were hypocrites, hypocritical. Okay? We all know Peter. We're not even touching that. Okay? We all know Peter. Paul. Paul the Apostle. Paul did what he hated. He wanted to be sinlessly perfect, but he knew he couldn't. Okay. That didn't mean he threw caution into the wind and just did whatever. No. No. You know, strive against sin. Okay. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't do that. Okay. In the description box and stuff like that. But um, Paul. Paul had moments when he was a hypocrite. Acts chapter 21. Okay. And again, this will be in the... Uh, will be in the description box too where we go into this into depth. Acts chapter 21 verses 18 on to verse 28. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his, by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law, which is today, which is not a requirement for salvation. Uh-oh. 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 And of course, Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, verse 20, uh, verses 19 and 20. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. And this is the one that these easy believism devils really, they don't touch on this. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. And let's look at verse um, 27 and 28. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Okay? The law is our schoolmaster. We, we, we talk about this, I believe, in the previous video. Okay? We've talked about this in depth. Okay? All right? We talk about this, I believe, in the previous video. Okay? Which will be in the description box. If, if you have any questions, there, there are videos where we talk about this. Okay? So, and then, of course... Galatians, the book of Galatians. We do not keep the law today to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. You do not keep the law today to be saved, stay saved, or be right with God. And that is a heresy that many people, like Mark the Messenger, likes to bring in to curse you, to put a yoke on you. Okay? Like what we are, like at the opening of this video, we discussed. Okay? So, by the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified. By grace through faith. Okay? We are under the law to Christ. You read Romans chapter 13. You read the Pauline epistles. Okay? All right? All right? But, by the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Okay? Back in Acts chapter 21, verse 21. And they are informed of thee, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying they ought not to circumcise their children, neither walk after the custom. 
What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do this, do therefore this that we say to thee. We have four men which have a vow on them. Check out the video where we're talking about this. Um, his, the Lord's will be done, but maybe not our way. Check out that. It'll be in the description box, okay? Them take and purify thyself with them, that purification in accordance with the law, okay? That they may shave their heads, which Paul himself did because he had a vow, okay? And all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. And they settled this in Acts 15. Okay? You don't have to keep the law today to be saved, to stay saved, to be right with God. It's not a requirement in salvation today. It's not. Paul knew that. Paul knew that more so than most because the gospel that is today was revealed unto Paul. Okay? So, verse 25, as touching the Gentiles which believe, and here was the, the problem with James, and we discussed that in that video. He had the Jew and Gentile mentality. Well, they all believed on the same Lord, but, you know, us Jews, we got these other things to do. And you Gentiles, you just do these little things. We got it. That, that's not the case. Paul spake against that. Peter spoke against that even. Okay? He did. All right? They settled this in Acts 15. Okay? All right? But, unfortunately, let's continue. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangled, and from fornication. And Paul, then Paul, took the man, and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the, to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until an offering should be offered for every one of them a blood a blood offering an animal sacrifice and when the seven days were almost ended an animal sacrifice had yet to be made then the lord steps in the jews which were of asia when they saw him in the temple stirred up all the people and laid hands on him crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place and further brought Greeks also into the temple and hath polluted this holy place. So Paul knowing that by the deeds of the law no flesh will be justified and yet that's exactly what these people were about to do and before an animal sacrifice could be made the Lord's like, and the Lord warned Paul, uh, you know, Paul, maybe you shouldn't go to Jerusalem. I'll get you to Rome another way. Paul, his pride problem. Why are you, why are you saying this? I'm ready to die. And he sure was. And he went anyway. Paul. Paul. The greatest of the church of the living God. Romans 7 verse 15 for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Ultimately, we saints. Verses 24 and 25 in Romans 7. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. We, we talk about this in the video on Romans 7, which will be in the description box, okay? Paul, knowing, number one, that the Lord probably didn't want him to go to Jerusalem. He went anyway because he had a pride problem. Two, 
Paul, in compromise, willing to appease people, three, did something which he knew, which he knew was not a requirement. And, 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 and about that, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9, 1 Corinthians 9, verses 20 on to verse 21. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law as without law. Be not without law to God, but under the law to Christ. Okay, and you read Galatians. Okay? That I might gain them that are without the law. Okay? Paul was trying to, was behaving as something he was not. A lost sinner still held under the law. Guess what? Hey, does Paul the Apostle, does he get your certificate of hypocrisy? Coming from the biggest hypocrite of them all. Yeah. Does Paul get the certificate of hypocrisy, you stinking scoundrel devil? Paul wasn't under the law, under the law to Christ, yes, but not being judged by the law because by grace, through faith, he is saved. See how this works? Paul was behaving, acting like a hypocrite. But there's another one, another one. Like I said, we're not even going to talk, touch on Peter because everybody knows that. Even the people is like, well, don't judge. <laughs> okay. Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 12. Second Samuel chapter 12. Verses 1 on to verse 6. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought up, which he had brought, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat, and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. Precious, precious. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock, and of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb, and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled <laughs> against the man. And he said to Nathan, Oh, how dare the audacity! <laughs> As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. What's going on here? Well, let's look at 2 Samuel 11, verses 14 on to verse 17. David sent his men out to fight while he himself stayed at Jerusalem to kind of bask in his glory when he should have been out there with Joab taking things over, Okay. And while King David was, you know, chilling on the top of his, his uh, thing at Jerusalem, just like, ah, I've, I've made it. 
I've arrived. You know, he, he got up and stretched himself. Kind of like, yeah. Then he looked younger. And he saw Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah the Hittite, bathing herself. Talk about a peeping, a peeping Tom, huh? And, of course, seeing a very attractive, beautiful woman in her birth suit bathing herself. Us men. Okay? So, King David sent for her and he lay with her. And she was with child because of that. So David goes and sends Uriah, sends for Uriah out of the battle. Gets him back and gets him all drunk. And hopefully the mindset there is that it's like, okay, you get drunk and you go make love to your wife. But Uriah, Uriah who is of noble character. Um... Verse 11, And Uriah said unto David, Yark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab, and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife as, thy, as thou livest? And as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. The noble character of, of Uriah the Hittite. David brought him back to get him drunk so he could cover up his sin so Uriah would think that that son or that child was actually Uriah's when it was actually David's. We all get it. Okay? And then what did David do? Verses 14 on to verse 17. And when all else failed, what did David do? And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass, when Joab observed the city, that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that the valiant men were, and the men of the city went out and fought with, jo uh, with Joab. And there fell some of the people of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. David had Uriah killed so he could have Bathsheba. And he used the sword of the enemy. And of course, Joab. Joab. Yeah. So, when you read 2 Samuel 12, verses 1 on to verse 6, okay, the little Ulam, Bathsheba, the rich guy was David, and the poor one was Uriah. And then David, because of his guilt, because he knew what he was done, what had been done, right? Being a hypocrite, pretending, acting as if he's this righteous guy when he just committed adultery and murder. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Yeah, he was uh, being a hypocrite. He was acting as if he had done nothing wrong. Acting as if he was righteous when he knew what he had done. Sound familiar? Verse 7 on to verse 14. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee thy master's house 
and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and, and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the sun. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. And David said unto Nathan, Who are you to talk to me? I've been saved for 25 years. I do, I, I know. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Saul did the same thing, but see, Saul wanted to make it, make it look good for the people whom he was more concerned with. Okay, and David, with the strickening of the child, went and wet, uh, fasted and wept before the Lord, before the child. Well, Saul, it's like, said to Samuel, it's like, I've sinned, okay, but come with me to make a show so the people will still see how godly I really am. Big difference. Talk about, you know, Saul, there's another one, okay. There's another one. There's another good uh, scriptural example of a hypocrite. Okay? But see, David and Paul differ. Why? Because they had moments of this. Where, where Saul, he was it. Never left it. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. And by the law, David should have been killed. Absolutely. David, according to the law, was to be, was to be killed, not murdered. Killed for what he did. How be it, because by this great... Be, Howbeit, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And similar, similar in respects to the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve, they didn't die like that. An animal had to die to cover their nakedness. Whereas this child died because of what David did. And this, this child was in heaven, absolutely. Matthew 23 again. Matthew 23 again. Verses 13 on to verse 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Showing you, you know, talking kingdom of heaven is the actual literal physical kingdom. But our instruction in righteousness is, For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. And that's the problem with these, this whole subcategory of these disgusting Christians who are constantly pointing out error in everyone else. They themselves are not saved, neither are they going to heaven, and like a babe, and that's the and that's the thing, brethren. A babe in Christ might come upon some of these devils and hear them. So well, but we don't judge, don't judge. This guy's a hypocrite, this guy's a hypocrite, da 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 da. And all the while, not getting fed, not getting any edification, but, oh, this, 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 this. No. See, these devils, they're not going to heaven. 
And they want to prevent others to go to the Lord. In accordance with Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same. But have pleasure in them that do them. And these people do what? They cannot sleep. Unless they cause some to what? Fall. Or fail. Which one is it? One second. Proverbs 4.16 For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. You know, to be busy for the Lord doing this is one thing. But when you're a channel where all you're doing is pointing out things in other people and you're doing like 10 videos, 15, even sometimes even 20 videos a week. What, what time do you have for sleep unless you're causing some to fall? Okay. Okay, let's continue in Matthew 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! They were acting as if they, were, they had in heart an interest the things of the Lord, but in not they had only the interest of the things of themselves, their best life now, okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers, prayer, therefore shall ye, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. And that's the problem, brethren. These babes who get messed up with these devils can get led astray. Okay? Being babes, and, uh, and hopefully, Lord willing, you know, they'll, they'll hear it's like, wait a minute, there, there's, okay. Y yes, you pointed out everybody is wrong except you. But what are you giving me? How, okay, what, where, are you admonishing me to read the scriptures? Are you helping me out with understanding of scripture? No, you're busy doing all of this. Okay? Like I said, that wicked pond scum inquisitor for the Vatican from New York, he at least attempts, see, he's a devil going to hell, and he's teaching false doctrine, yes, but see, he's at least doing that, not defending him, but you got all these others who just do this, 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 this. Come on, people. Matthew 23, verses 23 on to verse 28, skipping a little. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Judgment! <laughs> Don't judge me. That's what a lost person says. Okay? That's what a lost person says. Don't judge me. Clean up your own backyard first, boy. Uh, uh, the Lord saved me. I, I used to do that. Don't judge me. I Don't worry. <laughs> this will judge you at the great white throne of judgment, you pond scum. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to the next one, okay? Judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat, and swallow a camel. There it is. Okay? You stubbed your toe. You dropped the couch on your favorite big toe and dropped the loudest F-bomb that could be hold, heard in five counties away. Years ago. And you've gone on since. But see, a devil's like, ah, fire, you did that, you did that. And that's what these, this is, this is apparent 
in how they behave and the videos that they make, the preaching they do, the way they behave themselves, okay? Come on, come on. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Again, you know, you, you people that are constantly doing this, you know, that's all you do. Um, wow. It, it must suck to be you being so perfect amongst all these people who are so beneath you. <laughs> and your false humility. Oh, you're disgusting. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within, are, within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. See, you try to clean the outside while the inside is still filled with dung. That dung's going to come out and defile the outside. Wow, imagine that. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear to appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within Ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. <laughs> Look. Save people sin. Save people will have moments where we are hypocrites and moments of hypocrisy. But we do not stay thereon. Okay? We get up. We go forward. The Lord chastens us through scripture. You know? Self-examination of the scripture. A brother or a sister. Rebuke you. A wife or whatever. Or a husband. Okay? Alright? But see... These devils, that all they do, that's it. Hey, I've, I've done videos going, you know, it's like, hey, watch out for this. Yes, but that's not what this is all about. That's part of it. But see, when you come across these people, that all they're about is this. Stay away from them. Stay away from them. Because... Even our Lord, who puts the finger on that one thing you lack yet, yes, but he also encouraged, he also strengthened. Okay? So, thank, thank the Lord. That is going to be it for this video. I'm um, going to be quite a few um, links in the description box for you to consider. Um, if there have been, uh, you know, things... That like if I missed a groove or something like that, uh, the comment section, the brethren, uh, the the brethren uh, will correct me if they are there or put things of scripture. I did block quite a few people before I came back to start using this channel because, you know, there were a few people that, you know, you know, yeah, good. Yeah, but wait a minute, there's something off. So anyway, hopefully this helped you. Hopefully the Lord be glorified. People, there is a time and a place for everything and a time for every purpose under heaven. But when you come across these Christians who all they do, that's it. Is call everybody a hypocrite, they're lost, they're, they're this, this, that, that, the other thing. And they themselves who put off this thing that they are this perfect sinless creature. 
Just think about it. When all you're doing is this, what does that say about you? Oh, that, well, you must be this perfect creature. Stay away from people like that. Because what? They're all about flesh. Entertainment. Are you not entertained? No. Uh, I'm going to get this uploaded and Lord willing do another video about the <laughs> the climate change that you can believe in in some respects. So, Thank you. Please pray for one another. Pr please pray for us. Brethren, please keep in prayer of your servant getting down to uh, Missouri to help a uh, brother of ours who's going to need all the help he can get. He's going to need someone there for a little while to help him because he's going to be going through some surgery. Please keep the Lord in prayer about that, that he make the way to ha for that to happen and that he provide for that to happen. Please pray for one another. We love you. Thank you. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.